Hello, this is the Antino Talism Breed or Breeding Ground or how to achieve an unwanted effect. In order to talk about this, I need to introduce two variables. The first is the natural fertility. You maybe understand this. Uh, nine out of ten persons have enough natural fertility in order to have kids but one out of ten will not. But there is another kind of cultural fertility or infertility. For instance, in the Middle Ages, you had to marry in order to have kids. There was the occasional uh, illegitimate kid, but it was a rule, so we can say the cultural fertility in the Middle Ages was somewhere between 3 out of 10 or 4 out of 10. Okay. Maybe even lower. And this was even in the case in cities. Now, when we change to baby booms, uh, things look very different. We have 8 to 10, etc. And today it might, even, it might be lower, 7 over 10. But the question is, what happens if we introduce antinatalism? Let's assume that from seven, uh, an additional two lose interest because they become antinatalists. We are left with a cultural fertility of five over ten. And the interesting part happens now. For this, I open a new page. Now, this is not real family planning, but it's it's a family planning that might happen in the future and might have happened in the past. Who knows? In an ideal world, you have four grandparents. And those four grandparents have X grandchildren. Now, one of these grandchildren, for instance, finds a partner. And this partner has equally four grandparents. And those four grandparents have Y kids. Now, the couple here, they ask, how many kids can we have? Now, the female says, the woman says, I can have four over X ki uh, kids. And the male says, I can have four over Y kids. So far so good. But this is not an ideal world. In, an I uh, in, in this world we have to account for fertility. And this means we need to add the factor in N because some of her sisters or siblings might in fact be infertile. And there is also the cultural fertility to add. Because she alone might be the one to sustain a family, but her sisters might not. So let's generalize this uh, equation. K equals 4 over nc. Now, 1 over x plus 1 over y, that's simply x plus y over xy. Okay, with that we can insert some real numbers. Let's assume that x equals 6 and y equals 2. And let's assume that n is 9 over 10. And our cultural fertility is low, low 5 over 10, due to antinatalism. OK. Now we can calculate this. 4. Now instead of dividing by 9 over 10, I can multiply by 10 over 9 times 10 over 5. 
Now 6 plus 2 equals 8 and 6 times 2 equals 12. And I happen to know that this is circa 5.9. Okay, that's a lot, a lot of kids. That's what happens when people start to include cultural fertility. And we can ask what happens if they neglect cultural fertility. Well, in this case, we make this 4 times time 9, 10 over 9. And here we ne neglect it, so it becomes 1. And here again we have 8 over 12. And this is 2.9. So, you see the influence of the cultural fertility. Now, we can say if the cultural fertility is high, then the number of kids is low. But if the cultural fertility is low, but then people start to number, uh, uh, people start to have more kids. Now, of course, it's all about what people believe. We know that promoting a low C will result in more kids. And the question is about promoting antinatalism. Because what happens if people believe that there are more antinatalists than there really are? And that's the lesson I want to give you today, you ponder, whether you inadvertently will have an effect which you don't desire, that some people will have more kids because they believe there are more antinatalists than there really are. Think about it. Thanks for watching. See you.